In this video, we're going to talk about Duke University, the pros, the cons, and how to get in. When a lot of people think about Duke, they tend to think of it as a large public institution. And maybe that's because it has a legendary basketball culture. Uh, it has a fierce rivalry with UNC Chapel Hill, which is about 20 minutes away. It's known for being a really well-known research institution. Um, it's known for having a lot of school spirit. And it's also known for having a large, prominent uh, Greek system. But in fact, Duke University is quite the opposite. It's a rather small university with only about 6,500 undergraduates, and it's a private institution. And in this way, it's really similar to most of the Ivy Leagues in terms of size, in terms of the look of the campus and the feel. And perhaps that's why they call it the Harvard of the South. You can't talk about Duke without talking about its once prominent Greek system. So not too long ago, fraternities and sororities played a really large role on campus, and they were part of the reason why um, so many people loved the university. The school had kind of a work hard, play hard uh, dynamic, and students loved being able to you know, pick their own family of friends to hang out with. But in the past few years, starting around 2020, uh, the school has gone through a major transition and there were accusations that these, um, the Greek organizations were racist and classist and sexist. And so uh, recently the school has kind of banned all of the uh, fraternities and sororities um, to off campus. So they still exist, but they're not on campus anymore. And they've also pushed back the date of when students can uh, rush them. And the school has replaced the Greek organizations with something called Quad X. And the idea here is to kind of create a residential community system similar to the way uh, Yale has something. So at Yale, uh, they have residential colleges. There are 14 of them. And when you get in as a freshman, you're uh, randomly assigned to one of these residential colleges, almost like Harry Potter. And this kind of becomes your family for the next four years on campus. You live in the dorm uh, in your residential community. You have your own dining hall. You have your own library space, you have your own study rooms, you compete in intramural events. And even when you graduate, that's how other Yale alumni kind of know you. The first thing they ask you is like, you know, what college were you in? So Duke is trying to replace the exclusive Greek organizations with a more inclusive residential community system, um, but it's getting a lot of pushback. And some students like it and some students don't like it all because it takes choice out of the equation. For example, if you're at Duke, you can't just room with one of your friends. If you want to live in one of the dorms, you have to room with someone who's actually in your assigned quad. And that can be kind of uh, irritating for some students. Also, you don't have your own dorm, right? You share it with other quads. You don't have your own dining hall. So what they're trying to do is kind of create this sense of history and this sense of rivalry, but it remains to be seen whether this will turn out someday to be a good success or whether it will be a big failure. But currently, there's a lot of tension on campus, and it's unknown how this will shake out. What are some of the pros of Duke? One of the first pros is that it's well known for its research. And historically, Duke was really known for scientific research. So anything in the STEM field, biology, chemistry, computer science, or engineering. But a lot of students don't know that it's equally well regarded for some of the humanities as well. So if you want to go into public policy, if you want to go into economics, um, Duke has a really strong writing program in all their disciplines, and students are encouraged to do research in any of those fields. So it's not just that Duke excels at STEM research, it really excels at all research. A second pro of Duke is that it has a very down-to-earth vibe. So if you look at a lot of similar institutions, like some of those in the Ivy League, there's kind of um, a degree of intellectual snobbery at these schools, and there's also a sense of hyper-competitiveness um, among students. And Duke doesn't really have any of this. The students are equally bright, they're equally ambitious, but it's a much more down-to-earth, friendly, collaborative vibe. A third pro of Duke is that it has incredible school spirit. And usually this is built by the fact that students rally around the, uh, the top-tier basketball team. You know, they camp out to get tickets, they, they really support their team, and it has a way of bringing the whole campus together. And a lot of schools don't have this. Um, there are many top schools that really kind of lack that, um, that central element, that kind of unifying element that brings students together and students just kind of do their own thing. But there are a number of top tier universities like Duke that are really known for their school spirit, 
like, for example, University of Michigan or UCLA or USC or Dartmouth or Cornell, all of these really kind of foster a sense of bonding among students. And then when you graduate, there's this really strong alumni network. And these alumni kind of bend over backwards for you uh, to help you in your career and to help you find jobs. And a final pro for Duke is that there's the opportunity for free tuition. And every year, about 25 first-year applicants to either Duke or University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, which is about 20 minutes away, they're selected based on their strong leadership potential. And they're given something called a Robertson Scholarship. And that's a full ride for four years. It includes room and board and incidentals. Uh, it covers absolutely everything. And not only do you get a free ride, but you're also given dual citizenship on both campuses. So that means you can take courses at either Duke or UNC. And then sophomore year, year you actually do a switch where you actually spend one semester at the sister campus. And it's really supposed to kind of give you the best of both worlds, a small private university and a large public university. Take advantage of everything on both campuses, all the courses, all the um, extracurriculars you want. And then even three summers, they fully fund a kind of like a research or a travel experience for you. So every summer you get this um, immersive um, learning experience, you know, working in a community somewhere around the world and it's fully paid for. So it's hyper competitive, you know, and you have to apply to this when you apply to the school, uh, but it's well worth trying. What are some of the cons of Duke? Well, the first con is kind of what I alluded to before, which is this uncertain social scene. It used to be that Duke was known for its really fun social life, but in the last few years, it's undergone some major changes and no one knows um, what things are gonna be like. And another con is that even though Duke has become increasingly diverse over the past few years, the school still has a reputation for being white and wealthy. And, if, uh, and, and recently they did a survey and they found that about 50% of students on campus either identified as white or partially white. So there are a number of students on campus who feel that the school just hasn't done enough to diversify. And the other thing is that Duke has a lot of students from the South. So it's one of the best schools in the South. So anyone who comes from a Southern state is likely to apply there and maybe more likely to apply there than somewhere in the Northeast. And if you look at students who come from North Carolina, South Carolina, Texas, and Florida, that makes up about a third of the student body. So you just have to know when you go to Duke that there's a disproportionate number of students who come from the South. How to get into Duke. The first tip for getting into Duke is to apply early decision, which is when you make a binding commitment. And historically, the early decision rate for getting into Duke was about 20%. And you compare that for the regular decision rate, which is closer to 6%. So it used to be that applying early decision gave you a huge admissions boost. But that rate has been plummeting in recent years and now is closer to about 12%, which is not nearly as much. So when you apply early decision, you still double your admissions odds statistically, but it's important to know that that admissions boost isn't nearly as strong as you get at some other top tier schools. There are a number of other top tier schools that still have ED rates that are closer to 20%, like Northwestern, Cornell, Dartmouth, Williams, Swarthmore. So when you're making a college list and you feel like you'd be just as happy going to Duke as going to one of those other schools, it might be wise to apply to one of those other schools. Early decision because you have a much better admissions boost. The other tip for getting into Duke is to submit either your SAT score or your ACT score. Now, Duke is technically test optional, so you can apply without submitting your scores. But when you look at what students are actually admitted to the school, uh, a disproportionate number are those who submitted their scores. So for the class of 20, uh, 2026, for example, 86% of students who were accepted submitted their scores. And only 14% who got in didn't submit their scores. And those were likely recruited athletes, sons and daughters of faculty, etc. So my best advice for you is if you want to go to Duke, you know, take a test prep course, take that work seriously, spend most of your junior year doing as well as you possibly can, and then submit those scores. And the average scores at Duke are like 1530 for the uh, SAT and about 34 for the ACT. If you're anywhere close to those numbers, um, it behooves you to submit your scores. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me directly. I'll put my email in the video description below.